Hello and welcome to this lecture video. In this video I'm going to be talking about sales mix selection and the utilization of a constraint and we're also going to be doing some additional problems involving managerial decisions, okay? So let's talk about constraints and so when a company makes a lot of different products some are more likely to be profitable, profitable than others and so what we need to think about is if we have a constraint in our production process and what I mean by a constraint is anything that prevents you prevents the company from getting more of what it wants so if there's a constraint in the production process maybe we have a machine and it only has so much time to do one product and then make half of the demand for a second product it doesn't have enough time to make demand customer demand for both products so basically we're going to have to choose which product should we emphasize okay you would have a similar issue in your own personal life. Let's say you had two part-time jobs, okay? And you only have enough time to work one part-time job and then part of the second part-time job. So you don't have enough time to put in all the hours into both part-time jobs, okay? You only have so many hours in a day and you have to split your time between these two part-time jobs, all right? So let's say that part-time job A pays you $10 an hour and part-time job B pays you $8 an hour. Which one are you going to choose first? The one that pays you more per hour. So what you would do is you would spend as many hours as your employer would let you on part-time job A because that pays you $10 an hour. And then any other time that you have left over, you would go to part-time job B that pays you $8 per hour. We have a similar situation here in terms of sales mix. We have, pro we have different products and maybe we don't have enough time on machines or we don't have enough labor or any other constraints, something that prevents us from making all the, all the products that our customers want. We have some type of constraint and what we need to do is to choose those products that give us the most contribution margin, remember contribution margin, is sales minus variable costs, that give us the most contribution margin per unit of the constrained resource. Now that sounds really fancy, <clears throat> but really all that it means is getting back to the part-time job example. Part-time job A pays you $10 an hour, part-time job B pays you $8 an hour. When we talk about the constrained resource in the context of your part-time jobs, it's your time. It's your time. You only have enough time to work part-time job A and then maybe some of part-time job B, right? You don't have enough hours to work both. So your constrained resource is time. So when you think about which one would you maximize, you're going to maximize, you're going to spend most time on part on the part-time job that pays you the highest wage per hour. So similarly here, what we're going to do is if we have a machine, it only has enough hours to satisfy some of the demand for product for product A, and then some of the demand for product B, we don't have enough time to make all of product A and all of product B. Which one are we going to emphasize? The product that gives us the highest contribution margin per minute or per hour or per whatever time resource we want to say on the machine okay so let's walk through an example to really solidify what I'm talking about right over here so our company makes two products X and Y the current constraint is machine n 34 and we have selected data on the following products we have a selling price of $60 60 60 bucks per unit $50 per unit right over here variable expenses 36 and then 35 and then we know how to calculate our contribution margin we take our sales minus our variable expenses gives us 24 sales minus our vari variable expenses gives us 15 and then we know how to calculate our contribution margin ratio by taking contribution margin as a percentage of sales contribution margin as a percentage of sales 40 percent 30 percent now our current demand per week from our customers. Our customers want 2,000 units per week of product X and they want 2,200 units per week of product Y. And then 
the processing time per unit on machine N34. It takes us one minute for product X and 30 seconds for product Y. So here's the thing. Machine N34 is only available for 2,400 minutes per week which is not enough time to satisfy the current demand. So if we thought about the current demand, we would say we have 2,000 units of X, right? Product X, our, that's from the prior page, our customers want 2,000 units of X. It takes us one minute times one, which means we have 2,000 minutes that we would need to make all of product X. Product Y requires 30 seconds, and our customers, as we see on the prior page, want 2,200 units of product. Why? One thousand one hundred minutes to make all of Y. So if we add those two together, right, what we would be looking at is 3,100 minutes total to make all of X and all of Y. Well, the problem is we only have 2,400. So the company, so what the question becomes is should the company focus on product X or product Y? And so what we want to do is calculate out our contribution margin for X and for Y, and then, which we already did, and we want to put that here, remember contribution margin is sales minus variable expenses. So we look on the prior page, remember we had 24, and we had 15 right over here. Now our resource required to produce one unit, one minute, 0.5 minutes. Then what we can do is take our contribution margin divided by the resource time or resource required to produce one unit. So what we can see is for product X, we get 2,400, pardon me, 24 dollars of contribution margin per minute. Here, we get $30 of contribution margin per minute. So which one should be emphasized? Product Y, because we get more contribution margin per minute on the machine. Going back to the example that I was talking about in terms of your part-time jobs, you have only so many minutes and you have two part-time jobs, okay? And if you worked both, if you worked all the hours that your employer would let you on both part-time jobs, right, you would exceed the number of minutes that you have or the number of hours that you can work in your part-time jobs. So then you have part-time job X, you have part-time job Y. Part-time job pays you, we'll just put this in terms of hours, $24 an hour. Part-time job Y pays you $30 an hour. Which one are you going to spend more time on? Part-time job Y, because that pays you more per hour, which is pays you more per unit of your constrained resource, which is your time. So remember, a constraint is anything that prevents us from getting more of what we want. A constraint for you in your personal life is time. It's time for everyone is a constraint. And so what you'd want to do is choose that job that pays you the most per hour. In this situation, we can take that similar logic. And what we want to do is choose the product that gives us the most contribution margin per unit of the constrained resource. In this context, our constrained resource are the number of minutes on this machine. And so what we want to do is give a, is choose the product that gives us the most contribution margin per minute on the machine. So now what we can do is we can allot the time on machine N34 between these two products. We can do a production schedule. And if we look over there, remember we had 2,400 minutes total, total minutes. Plan production of Y, so we're going to emphasize Y. And remember our customers want 2,200 units. The total time to required to make Y is, is 30 seconds or half a minute, which means we have our 1,100 minutes. 
And then we can come over here and then we can say, well, if we use 1100 out of the 1200 for product Y, how much is left over for product X? Well, you can subtract the two. That gives us 1300 minutes left over for X. And then the time required to make one unit of X is one minute. So when we look over here on the next page, we could see the plant production and sales. We want to make 1300 units of X because each unit takes one minute. So what we're going to do if we think about our total contribution margin in our total plant production. So we'll start with Y. Remember, we have enough units to make 2200. We have enough time, I'm sorry, to make 2200 units of Y. And that's what we did over here. So we're going to do 2,200 units of Y. And then oh, that only takes 1,100 minutes. Okay. X, we said we're going to take 1,300. We're going to make 1,300 units. And then we can look back on the prior page and remember our contribution margin per unit of X is 24. Multiplying those two gives us $31,200 of contribution margin. Our Y 2,200 units times our $15 of contribution margin per unit gives us our 33,000. And then what we can do is we can add these two together and that gives us our $64,200 total contribution margin. Okay. Let's talk about this cost allocation death spiral. And so this always sounds like something out of Star Wars to me. I'm a big Star Wars fan, as you know. And so what we're saying is that, remember we had that library. And then that went out to Department 1, Department 2, and then we'll say Department 3, and then Department 4. And remember we had, maybe we have what we have is $10 of library costs. So it's 2 and a half, 2 and a half, 2 and a half, and 2 and a half. And what we said was that, let's say we drop department one, and then what happens is with that library cost, because that's a common allocated fixed cost, it gets switched over. 3.3, 3.3, and 3.3. And what this is saying right over here is that as a result of getting a larger share of these library costs, maybe department two is no longer profitable. So we cross that one out, and then we go five and five. And then maybe department three, because it gets a larger share of the library costs, is no longer profitable. So that's what this is saying, is that you just have to be aware of this and not consider those common allocated fixed costs, because they're, they're fixed at the organizational level, and unless they decline, right, they're going to stay the same. And so you don't want to take those into account, and that's why we didn't take those into account when we were thinking about dropping that product line. But you also want to keep in mind that as this department gets a larger share of those library costs, it may look unprofitable. But again, that's why we don't want to consider those because they're fixed costs and they can make this one look unprofitable because it just gets shifted to other product lines. As I was saying earlier in some other lecture videos, there's also a lot of qualitative considerations to be made when we're thinking about dropping a product line, making or buying, make or buy decisions. We don't just make those decisions based on financial concerns. Dropping that dance major that Mary Washington did a long time ago, I'm sure that was a significant question, a significant issue that they had to think about. And it wasn't just financial concerns. It was also a lot of qualitative concerns that now where do the students go? How does that make Mary Washington look as a liberal arts and sciences school without a dance major? And then, of course, that is broadcast all over the newspapers and then people get up, could get upset. So there's a lot of qualitative factors that you need to consider. Employee morale, legal issues, the quality of your product, and then the quality of your service. Of course, we are assuming we did assume in the make or buy that the quality of the product and the quality of the service was the same between make or buy, and maybe that's not all the case. That's not always the case. Okay? So thank you so much for your time.